Documentation of an audit. If you wish, you can still go ahead and call it audit documentation, or you can call it recording of an audit. So when you're recording an audit, in most cases, everything that you do in auditing must be documented. Remember, that is what is going to be held as evidence. And therefore, when you're collecting evidence, after completing maybe that particular process of collecting evidence, you need to maintain document that showcase that you had collected those particular what? Evidence. So that's what we are looking today. So in this lesson here, what we need to do is to look at this word, working papers. Working paper is going to be forming the document that are going to be used for what? For recording the audit. And then we are going to look on the importance of documentation. Importances of documentation. Sometimes this has to go hand in hand with what? Importances of working papers. And then we are going to introduce the forms of working papers. Forms of working papers. From there, we are going to introduce what we refer to as the types of working papers. Types of working papers. And in each case here, we will be looking on the advantages and disadvantages of each. Advantages and disadvantages of each. And then later on, we'll be looking about perhaps maybe the auditor's lien on working papers. This one is another way of asking who owns the working papers in an audit. Is it the auditor? Is it the client? That is what we are looking in that particular part. So this is the whole issue relating to documentation that we are supposed to be covering. Our authorizing standard is ISA 200 and that. This is where you will find the requirement that all accountants, all auditors, should go ahead and maintain proper records of the work done. So the question is, then why do we have to document the auditor's record? This is the reason. The reason why you have to document the audit, reasons for documentation, are very simple. One is to ensure that the audit work has been completed or has been conducted. To ensure that the audit work has been done or has been conducted. Has been conducted and completed. Sometimes we document the audit work as evidence of work done. So we say it is evidence of work done. That is the purpose of documentation. The reason why we maintain document is because that is going to be used as evidence in a court of law in case an auditor is sued for negligence. So you say provides evidence in case of what? In case of lawsuits. Of lawsuits. This one is a requirement of the International Standards on Auditing number 230 and 220 that we are supposed to document all the audit work. So to ensure proper planning, to ensure proper audit, we need to go ahead and document the audit work. And therefore, it also acts as a part of quality review. It promotes quality of the audit work. Audit work. All the documents that we are using are supposed to help maybe any auditor who is coming to familiarize with the system of the client or sometimes to go ahead and understand the client. And so these documents are used maybe for collecting background information of the client. So we can also put that one here, we say, for collecting, for collecting background information of the client, information of the client. So that forms part of what we refer to as reasons for documentation. Why do we have to record the auditor's work? But the recording of the auditor's work is done using what? Working papers. And therefore it is important we define the term working papers. So when we're talking about working papers, we say 
these are documents maintained for the auditor for the work done. And so we can start that definition here. We can say working papers means working papers would mean all records, all documents, all reports, all correspondences held by an auditor, held by an auditor in the course of the audit, in the course of the audit. In other case, we say working papers are documents that are used to record the audit work. They are used for recording the audit work. All working papers, you can say, they are documents for an audit. These documents are very, very important because they show that the audit work has been conducted. So when you look about the importances of working papers, we are still going to be using the same, same points. But just know the working papers can be a document in form of what? It can be a report. That is a working paper. A good example, a previous auditor's report may, should be contained in the working papers. It can be in form of a correspondence. When you are writing letters to who? When you are writing letters maybe to to the customers of the company or suppliers or bankers of the company, those are correspondences, they are part of the working papers. If you are maintaining something like a program, from the previous lessons we did discuss programs and we said motor vehicle programs, assets programs, those programs that you use for correcting audit evidence, they are part of what? Working papers. You can talk about that data that is used for testing or digital data. So if you are going to be holding any digital data, whether you are going to be collecting it in the course of your audit, it's very, very important as part of the working paper. So working papers does not limit us. It may be containing all those documents that are going to be held by an auditor in the course of his audit work. So it means all the records used by an auditor to document the audit work in the course of his audit. The importances of working papers, most of them are going to fall under this particular category. But we can still look at the differences. Here, we are going to delete that word and this time we're going to put purposes of working papers. The purposes of working papers will provide us the basis for, for documentation. And so most of the point here will be almost repeated. So we can talk about this word, purposes of working papers. Some people refer to this as what we refer to as objectives, or you can also go ahead and refer to that as uh, the reason for maintaining working papers. The working papers, remember, they are all the documents maintained by an auditor. All the documents, it doesn't matter. Even the engagement letter, including the audit planning memorandum, issues like uh, all the contracts held by the company, they are still working papers. So working papers are important because they provide evidence, evidence of work done. So if you want to tell people, I went to company ABC Limited, and that company, I found this particular and this particular information. The only way you can be able to, do it, to testify that one is through maybe the documents or maybe the working papers that you are holding. So it is evidence of work done. And again, we can say it is the basis, the basis for planning future audit or subsequent audit. For planning future audit. You can call it future audit or you can call it subsequent audit. So if you want to plan the audit of the next year, the only starting point will be the working papers. Previous year's working papers will help you maybe to start that particular audit work. Then we have working papers being used as evidence, evidence of work done by, work done by junior staff. And this one, we say it is used for monitoring that particular one. So if you are a senior auditor, maybe a higher ranking auditor, and you want to know whether these staff have done maybe the work according to what guidelines you had given them, the only way you can be able to confirm that one is through the working papers. So the working papers will help the, pre the senior auditor to check or maybe to monitor the work done by the junior staff. Again, this is evidence in a court of law, in the court of law. So again, previously we had said if you are sued, in case of auditor's liability, you find yourself in court 
and this time you have been sued either by the third party or you have been sued by the client, the only way you can be able to go ahead and maybe support yourself is by showing what you have done and what you had to do. That is going to be provided by the working paper. So it is used as evidence in the court of law. And then we say it is the basis of forming an audit opinion. Basis of expressing an opinion. Remember, if today you wanted maybe to form an opinion, you must have a base. The base is the information. So that information that is going to tell us what type of opinion you came up with. If you say the financial statement were true, then you have to show or tell us the, the reason why you came up with such kind of a conclusion. The reason why the financial statement are free from misstatement is because of this particular document, this particular information that I got maybe in that, that, that company. And again, we say this evidence is used for future reference. Used for future reference. So if you want to refer, for example, we're in the year 20, maybe something like 17, and you want to compare maybe who the work will be done in 2017 versus the work that was done in 2016. The only way you can be able to know how many transactions were audited in the previous years with the current year and compare that whether you have completed all the audit work is by checking the working papers. So the working papers can tell you previous year we had 10 units that we audited. Today we have 9 units. Then you can be able to try and find one. Where am I losing the one item that has not been audited. So other purposes of working papers would include issues relating maybe to what we refer to as uh, they can be used for training the audit staff. Training junior audit staff. Let me put that one here. Used for training used for training junior or new audit staff in an audit. So because they contain something like audit programs, you can be able to familiarize yourself with the work that's supposed to be done. And that's what we refer to as maybe the reason for working papers. That is supposed to answer this part. So I have defined what is working papers. We have said they are documents maintained by the auditor in the course of his audit work. Then we have talked about the importances. For example, they provide evidence of work done to the, to the auditors. And then we come to this particular part, forms of working papers. That is what we need to go ahead and now and clear, forms of working papers. There are two forms of working papers that you are supposed to know, and this one you are supposed to know them very, very well. Forms of working papers. If you read other books, you'll find that they call this one organization of working papers. So some people will say it means organization of working papers. So if you are an auditor, you are supposed to maintain two types of working papers. The first type of working paper is called a permanent, permanent audit file. Permanent audit file. The other one is referred to as what? We don't call it temporary because of the word permanent. We call it current audit file. So an auditor is required to maintain two types of working papers. One is a permanent audit file, the other one is a current audit file. We need to discuss each one as well as the content of each. So we are going to start with permanent current file, permanent audit file, and then we are going maybe to end up with that particular current audit, uh, working, working papers or audit file. So here I'm going to discuss permanent audit file or permanent file if you are an auditor and you're going to audit a company for a number of years, for example, you can say, I'm going to be in this company maybe for three years, four years, or five years. Remember, you're going to audit that company for as long as maybe the client or maybe the shareholders determine fit. If you're going to audit a company for a number of years, there are those documents that you need to have. We call them permanent audit files. A document that you're going to hold for more than one accounting period. So you can say, this year I was using that document, next year I'm going to use that document, next year but one I'm going to use that document. So we say, it holds, is a file, file that contains, contains documents and records, documents and records of continuing importance 
continuing importance is a file that contains documents and records of continuing importance we can give other features for example we can say the file contains documents and records that will be used for more than one year documents to be used by an auditor by an auditor for more than one year or one audit so if you are holding a document and that document is going to be held for as long as you are going to be the auditor in that client company then we say that document should be maintained in a permanent file if you are holding a document for more than one year when you're auditing then that document should be contained in a permanent audit file i'll give examples or the contents of that particular what file one of the content of this particular file document that you're going to be holding for more than one year is the statutory materials we say statutory materials or documents one statutory materials or documents in most cases we say when you're auditing a company you need a company's act so examples here would include company's act if you're auditing a what a company you need that document very very much if you're auditing a building society then you need a what a building society's act building society's act if you're auditing an insurance then you need an act the insurance act insurance and when you're auditing something like uh, let's say a bank you need a banking act banking act those are statutory materials statutory materials documents that have been maybe prescribed by the law but number 2 here you need documents that contains rules and regulations of the company rules and regulations of the company if you're auditing a company, then you need a memorandum. Memorandum of association. And you also need what? Articles of association. Articles of association. Remember, those are the two documents that maybe have internal and external regulations of a company. Any company must maintain those particular documents. The memorandum of, and articles of association. If you're auditing something like uh, a club, you need club rules and regulations. So we have club rules and regulations. And when you're auditing a partnership, you know very well you need a partnership deed. Partnership deed contains what? Rules and regulations. So the item number one that you need is the statutory material. Item number two is what? Rules and regulations that are going to be used in that company or that are used by that particular entity. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.